Welcome to this week's Money Metals Podcast, helping gold and silver investors during these treacherous times. Now, here's this week's market wrap with commentary and analysis from the company voted 2015's Precious Metals Dealer of the Year in the U.S., Money Metals Exchange. Welcome to this week's Market Wrap Podcast. I'm Mike Leeson. Coming up on today's program, we'll have a special report on some important new developments in sound money legislation at the state level. Be sure to stick around to find out which states are in the process of advancing the cause of restoring gold and silver as money. First, though, let's take a brief look at this week's market action in the precious metals. Gold, and especially silver, succumbed to heavy selling in the futures markets this week. Gold is getting hit for a 2.8% weekly loss as of this Friday morning recording to bring spot prices down to $1,202 an ounce. Silver is suffering a 6.1% smackdown this week and currently trades at $16.96. Meanwhile, platinum prices got pummeled by 5.8% as the automotive metal now sits at $943 per ounce. Palladium is holding up somewhat better than the other white metals and is down 3.3% since last Friday's close to trade at $751. Downward pressure in crude oil futures certainly weighed on other commodities and created some headwinds for the precious metals. Also to blame for this week's correction has been the ongoing rhetoric from the financial analysts in advance of next week's Fed meeting. Most are calling for a rate increase, which would be the first since President Donald Trump has taken office. Precious metals markets can certainly be volatile from week to week, but over time they are a more reliable store of value than Federal Reserve notes. Gold and silver remain the world's most enduring and most widely recognized form of money. And as spelled out in the U.S. Constitution, gold and silver coins are legal tender. Individual states can thus formally recognize gold and silver coins as legal tender alternatives to Federal Reserve note dollars. Both Utah and Oklahoma have passed legal tender laws in recent years recognizing gold and silver as money. The metals can be used freely as a means of payment and are free from all state taxes. More than 20 states have already removed sales taxes from precious metals transactions, with Alabama, Tennessee, and Maine now considering their own proposals to do so as well. Other states, including Arizona and Idaho, are moving forward on legislation to exempt gold and silver bullion on capital gains taxes. Since Money Metals Exchange is located in Idaho, we would be particularly excited to see it become a haven for sound money. Last Thursday, a bill to eliminate capital gains taxes on precious metals passed the Idaho House Committee on Revenue and Taxation. Money Metals President Stephen Gleason testified before the committee here is some of what he had to say. Our mission is to educate people also about precious metals and help them diversify into this reliable and more stable form of money, really truly a constitutional money with tremendous history going back to the founding of our country. And gold and silver have been chosen for thousands of years as money because of their qualities as financial insurance, as a store of value, and as a practicality, as a medium of exchange. The bill I want to talk about today is a straightforward bill. Basically, we don't want to tax money in Idaho. Idaho already does not tax precious metals with its sales tax, and we're asking for it to be removed from the uh, calculation of income tax in Idaho. So the founders of our, our nation dealt with the collapse of the unbacked continental dollar, and that was fresh in their minds when they created our monetary system and established gold and silver as our nation's money. And in fact, the dollar was defined as a fixed amount of silver. And even in the Constitution, the founders restricted states actually from making payment in anything other than gold and silver coins for payment of debt. For the first hundred years, our nation's money, gold and silver coinage, maintained its purchasing power pretty much consistently, except for a small period of time during the Civil War when we went off the gold standard. But then about 100 years ago, the Federal Reserve was created, and, and since that time, we've seen a dramatic decline in the purchasing power of what is now our, considered the dollar, but really is called the Federal Reserve note. And of course, the last link to that was severed officially in 1971, and that has led to an acceleration of this devaluation in purchasing power and an explosion in federal government debt during that same period of time. So the, the people that are most harmed by inflation are wage earners and savers. 
when the dollar goes down in purchasing power, they lose. Fortunately, an increasing number of citizens are recognizing that owning gold and silver as an alternative form of savings is a good way of protecting some of their wealth, protecting some of their purchasing power, and standing against this ongoing devaluation. It's also something that helps in periods of financial turmoil, which seem to be increasing under our current system. Gold and silver are a, a safe haven. So under current law, however, when a taxpayer sells their precious metals, they may end up with a capital gain because it's measured against the Federal Reserve notes that they sell it for. Now, it may not be a real gain. In most cases, it's not a real gain. It's, it's a nominal gain. It's an illusory gain. Yet it's still something that triggers taxation. And at the federal level, a taxpayer has to include that in their taxable income if they sold gold and silver bullion or coins. It's even taxed at a discriminatorily high 28% rate for long-term capital gains, which is higher than just about, well, 10, it's 15 and 20 for other types of assets. And then Idaho, and in the calculation of Idaho taxable income, essentially carries forward that income number, and then there's some adjustments that are made on various things according to Idaho statutes to arrive at the Idaho taxable income. So this legislation simply would back out the federal income or loss that somebody reports on precious metals out of their Idaho taxable income. And this is something that Idaho can do. Obviously, we can't mess with the federal tax laws, but Idaho decides what it's taxing as income. And we propose with this legislation that precious metals be removed because it's money. Also weighing in on behalf of Idaho's bill to free precious metals from state taxation was an executive of a freedom-minded group in the GEM state. My name is Fred Birnbaum with the Idaho Freedom Foundation, and I'm here to speak in support of this bill. I'll be very brief. I think uh, Mr. Gleason covered just about everything. But I, I'll make sort of a, a parallel point. And recently, actually this week, there was a lot of debate about a, uh, a constitutional amendment, Article 5 convention, and I'm, I'm not going to reopen that debate. But I think it's relevant to some extent to this bill. I don't certainly want to overplay that point. But what came up and what, one of the central issues was the unbalanced federal budget, if you will, and the fact that we've accumulated about $20 trillion with a T of federal debt. And I think sometimes it's hard to think of the inflation that we currently have as inflation. I mean, it, it certainly varies. It, it hasn't been very significant, say, in gasoline. It is in property. But the potential for inflation is huge because the, the Federal Reserve has uh, now issued about $4 trillion of, of digital money into the economy. It's pushed it since uh, the recession. And so I think what this bill does in many ways is it's a sort of a prospective measure in that um, those folks who either own gold or silver now or may in the future, if we do have a real bout of inflation, this will protect them from that. One of the challenges in getting this and similar bills passed is educating legislators on why gold and silver, being constitutional money, are different from other asset classes. Some politicians just don't grasp the fundamental distinction. Questions for Mr. Cleason. Representative Gannon. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And sir, I, um, one question I always have asked of me is if, if we uh, pass a bill like this is, well, are we picking winners and losers? I mean, and what about if I invest in a gold stock and I make money on my gold stock? Or what about oil companies? I mean, I mean, what, where, if, if we open up the door to one uh, particular kind of investment for a tax break like this, um, how, do, how do I explain to constituents that their particular investments don't get the same kind of tax break? Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Ms. Mr. Uh, Representative Gannon, uh, it's a good question. I, the, the key distinguishing characteristic here is that gold and silver are money. They're not a stock. They're not a piece of property. And, uh, you know, when it comes to mining stocks and things like that, obviously that's not covered here. Um, we're, we're talking about taking away taxation on the exchange of one form of money to, with another. So, you know, people are not unfortunately able to deduct the loss that they take when they have purchasing, when they have Federal Reserve notes and they dramatically decline in their value. Uh, there's no deduction for that. 
the, the deduction is basically everyone is, is paying the inflation tax, and they're not able to recoup that or protect themselves against that. So gold and silver is, is another alternative form of money. It's actually much more stable and historic form of money. And so that's how I distinguish this. This is about sound money and preserving people's savings and not giving any kind of special um, break for an investment class. Fortunately, there are politicians who understand that not taxing money in any form is a matter of consistency. Idaho State Representative Ron Nate made a strong case for treating gold and silver the same as the Federal Reserve note when it comes to taxation. Representative Nate, did you have discussion on, the mo on your motion? Yes, thank Go you, ahead. Mr. Chairman. In favor of the motion, this isn't just an investment. This is a money. And so... Uh, Federal Reserve notes are the, you know, the nationally recognized money, but according to Article 1, Section 10 of the Constitution, the only thing that the states can declare is money. We can't coin our own money. The only thing we can use as money is we can declare silver and, and gold as, as money. So it's the only real state money that we have control of. And uh, if, if holding money becomes something that is subject to to taxation, then uh, we have, I think, a perverse incentive in our government here that the, the money that they, they declare, that the government declares as, as legal tender, suddenly becomes a tax instrument for them as well. Uh, this makes sense for consistency. If gold coin, gold and silver coin are money, then we should not tax it when it increases in value. If you argue that we should tax it when it increases in value, then you should also argue that Federal Reserve notes, when they diminish in value because of inflation, ought to be, we ought to be able to declare capital losses on those on our tax forms as well. But because we don't allow that, we shouldn't be, shouldn't be taxing either capital gains or losses on gold and silver coin. This is a, a matter of consistency with, it, with regards to currency and the tax treatment of it. Thank you. We'll certainly keep you updated on the progress of the Idaho bill as it makes its way through the legislative process. In the meantime, the Arizona legislature looks poised to send similar legislation to its governor's desk. On Wednesday, the Arizona Senate Finance Committee heard testimony from none other than former Congressman Ron Paul. Dr. Paul was the leading voice in the U.S. Congress for sound money issues during his tenure there. He turned the once obscure idea of auditing, reforming, and ultimately ending the Federal Reserve into a national campaign issue when he ran for president in 2008 and 2012. Here's some of what Ron Paul had to say this week in support of Arizona's bill to eliminate taxes on gold and silver. It would be legalizing competition in a constitutional fashion. It isn't like saying, OK, Arizona wants to print their paper currency again, because you're not allowed to do that. On the monetary issues, the states uh, are talked about in the Constitution. And they have restrictions. They can't print money. But they also have been told in the Constitution that they can only use gold and silver as legal tender. So the responsibility is on the states to follow the rules, and that meant nobody was supposed to use anything other than silver gold, and gold as, as legal tender. But we've had a mess. It's gotten worse. It started in 1913. There was a sort of a climactic end in 1971, but the problems have continued. And if you look at some of the charts, uh, things have been really rocky since 71 with the destruction of uh, the value of the money. Since 1971, we've lost 95% of the value of the dollar. Believe me, the gold standard was invented a long, long time ago. From the beginning of recorded history, 5,000 years ago, they used gold and silver. Biblically, gold and silver, real weights and measures, that's what they counted by. So this is not brand new. It's the governments and the, and the people who seek power are always undermining the restraints placed on governments by honest money. So I congratulate you for hearing uh, and, and dealing with this bill, because I think if you do pass this bill, it will be a great step forward for a lot of people to understand the money issue and the freedom issue. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Paul. If the bills in Arizona and Idaho become law, you can bet similar sound money efforts will spring up in other states. Of course, states won't be able to abolish the discriminatory federal taxation of precious metals. 
but state-level reforms will catch the attention of members of the U.S. Congress. Sound money victories at the state level will help build political momentum for sound money legislation at the federal level. Groups such as the Sound Money Defense League are advancing the sound money movement by educating the public on the problems of our inflationary monetary system, as well as working with allies in elective office to enact reforms. Setting gold and silver free as competing currencies to Federal Reserve notes won't be easy, and it won't happen overnight. But real progress can be made and is being made one step at a time. Well, that will do it for this week. Be sure to check back next Friday for our next weekly Market Wrap podcast. Until then, this has been Mike Leeson with Money Metals Exchange. Thanks for listening, and have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you for joining us for this week's Money Metals podcast. Be sure to come back next week. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast through iTunes. For answers to all of your questions, or to discreetly and securely buy or sell gold or silver coins, bars, and rounds, call 1-800-800-1865 or visit www.moneymetals.com. Our knowledgeable and no-pressure specialists are standing by between 7 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. Mountain Time, Monday through Friday. Or you can lock in your order online, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Again, visit us at www.moneymetals.com or call 1-800-800-1865.